This is the studio of Pamela Wamala in the Gates Block building in Lowell, Massachusetts. Pamela is a member of the Arts League of Lowell and is a member of the ALL Co-op Gallery where she maintains a display of her work. And this is Pamela Wamala. Uh, what brought you to Lowell? I came here in the early 80s to go to UMass Lowell as a psychology student first and then as a psychology and art and then as a fine art student. Yeah, so you were born in the area? I was born in Wilmington. Well, no, I was born in Everett. But we moved around a bit in, in Massachusetts, and then, then Wilmi I grew up mostly in Wilmington, Mass. So, uh, as you said, you have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. Yes. You received your degree in 1987. Mm -hmm. Your interest in art began at the age of five, and you have pursued that interest your entire life so far. I know that your grandfather influenced you. Uh, how did the rest of your family feel about your desire to be an artist? I think they were very supportive, though. They uh, appreciated my art. They all have paintings of mine hanging in their home. Some that I created from when I was a child, a teenager, and yeah, I think they're proud of me. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, in high school, you were pretty active in the arts? Yes, I was the female class artist. You know how that, <laughs> that goes when we were growing up. It was, you know, a couple of people voted on the superlatives and I got class artist. As a painter, you began working in pastel. So you've, you've been pretty much a painter all your, your life? Painting's been my primary medium, yes. Yeah. So you've been working in pastels and oil, and how does that how has that changed over the years? So pastel was my primary medium when I launched back into being a painter when my children were small. When I was in college, though, oil painting was my primary medium. And so then there was a little bit of a break when I was raising my young children. Then when my youngest got on the bus to go to school for pre-K, I would run off with my pastel bag for two hours. And that's how I started again in 1999. And I did a series of landscape paintings that I ended up showing at the Whistler House Museum of Art. I see. At, in that year. Yeah. So. so what other kind of media interests you? You, you explore other media as you, you, you pursue your I, work? I do. I mean, I love oils. I have a, a lifelong passion for them, but they are so slow drying that I've found them a little bit difficult to work with at this point in my life because I want to... Um, instant just, gratification. I do want the instant <laughs> gratification. It's true. And there's... there's uh, Acrylics are so wonderful now. They have so many different mediums that you can mix in. You can make them look like encaustic. You can make them lean a little bit more like looking like an oil when you're done. And so I have been playing a lot with, in the last, I would say, decade um, with acrylics and also mixing other media in with them. Also watercolor. I've explored um, image transfer using either photography or my own drawings, transferring imagery into the paintings. Um, and maybe pastel would allow me to do that. I have ideas about that, but I haven't explored it. Uh, do you find acrylic and pastel, uh, one of the things I've seen that you like to do is you like to imitate uh, the appearance of uh, vintage photography. And how do uh, acrylics and pastels work with that? I love that you noticed that, and we did not talk about that in our little prime Surprise, surprise. <laughs> in our preview, because no one's ever really noted that. And I did take a deep dive for a couple of years, especially in my pastel work, to do a whole series that hit, had that vintage colored photography look to that. I just fell in love with that. I have a whole box of um, photo images of photographs that inspired a whole palette that I built in my pastel palette to emulate that look. And I love the softness of it. A lot of people have spoken to me about the serenity that they get when they look at my work. And it was already there before I was incorporating that concept, but it, it, I think it pushed the idea even more for people, that yeah. feeling. So do you do any work in oil at all anymore? Uh, I have oil sticks that I recently bought, and I did a series of, of um, abstracts with those that I have incorporated into three new pieces that are at the, well, now we're, we're filming this in August 2024, so if you're seeing this soon, the show will be up at Gallery Z. What is a typical work day for you as an artist? So one of the things I love about how I've structured my life is there is no typical day. Every day is different. I do have a bit of a structure in that I 
paint every day. Even if, if I'm traveling, I have a small paint kit that I take with me and I either work in a sketchbook or I create a small painting. Some of those small paintings have turned into series that I've shown, framed and shown. Some of them just live in sketchbooks to remind me of those trips. Um, it's been a great way to keep my hand in my work every day, even if I can't make it to the studio. Um, I started doing that about four years ago, and it's been usually supportive of, of my art practice to, to do that. Do you travel a lot? I do travel a lot since we're allowed to travel again. Um, I've been to Portugal and Morocco and India and Mexico, and then I have family that lives in North Carolina and also Brooklyn, New York, so we travel and see them. My folks live in Florida. So there's typically, for about a year and a half, I was traveling a trip every month, and so I'm pulling back a little bit from that because it was a bit exhausting. So this summer, I focused on showing more, creating and showing more in the local galleries. Yeah. Do your yeah. children live nearby? I have a son and his family in North Carolina, and my daughter and her wife are in Brooklyn, New York with their child. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have a... And uh, I have a sweetheart, and he has three kids, and they all have children. Yeah, we have a big, yeah. big family. Yeah. yeah. What kind of subject matter do you derive from your travel? Uh, so I always have a little painting kit with me, and I often will do, while I'm waiting for the air, airplane, I'll often sketch um, figures. So I have pages of individuals that are rushing to the airport or sitting and reading, and, and, and that's been fun to dig back into figurative work. I used to do that all the time in college. And then when I get settled into the place that I'm going to be, I'm often very drawn to either landscape I've done a few buildings, but more so flowers. When we were in Oaxaca, uh, I stayed two weeks at, at a property that my daughter and her wife own a share of, and they have a gorgeous landscape there. And so I did a fl whole floral series there that I uh, have some behind me and, and uh, on my website. Um, tell us a little bit about the Elder Art Initiative that you be, that you started. Yeah, I started that in 2009. It came out of my love of working with elders and being around elders, and also my early start in college, I thought I would be an art therapist, and so I dug into that area for a while and decided my personality is too absorbent to be a therapist. So this was a way later in life to come back to that idea of using art in a therapeutic manner. Um, because you don't have to necessarily be talking about issues you're trying to resolve to have art be a nice release in your life. Um, yeah. yeah. So you started your when you started your college career, you uh, all you majored in psychology also. Yes. So do you find that that helps with that kind of work? Does it, it does help a lot. I'm a good listener. Yeah. I'm, I, even without any of those courses that I took so many of, and I also took a lot in art history. Um, so in women's studies, I probably could have had three minors. Being successful as an artist, I suppose earning earning uh, earning an income from it is kind of important. Just wondering, how does that drive your selection of subject matter and media? Does that have any effect on it? The it, it does. Um, mostly, I gear my mind and energy toward subject matter that I know I love to work with, and that is rooted in doing landscape painting with my grandfather when I was, as I said, starting when I was five. I started acrylic painting with him and all through those early years. So when I did get back into painting again in my early 30s when my family was young, I was definitely driven to working plein air painting with pastels on site. And the energy that I got from that, just working with the light, the available light, was um, something So, so was the wonderful. market really doesn't drive, it's what you like. The market it, really doesn't drive what you, no, what you decide to paint. No. My love of whatever it's subject matter I'm digging into. Uh, how much of your work is on commission, and uh, is the economy affecting your sales at all? Years ago, I did more commissions. I'm open to them. I just haven't had an opportunity to um, work with anyone about with a commission lately. Uh, relative to the economy, I think the especially what I I noticed a big thing in the economy back in 2008. So far, it's been consistent, but 2008, I was talking to four different people about um, commissions, that open studio weekend, and at the end of the weekend, because of what happened in that time frame, all of those commissions dried up. So I've tried, that was years and years ago, but um, 
definitely economy can play a role. But I think because I focus on my teaching being my foundation income, I can separate myself from worrying about that. Um, I concern myself with creating the work, getting the work the best I can get it framed in the best possible manner, putting it out there showing, being on social media sharing, keeping my website updated. So I don't give a lot of thought to the economy um, relative to selling my paintings. Um, fortunately, I've been able, since COVID has subsided, I've been able to get back in the door at the nursing home communities where I teach, and that's a great foundation for my income, is working with elders in those communities. Besides the elder uh, program, do you offer instruction to, uh, to other I do. I work with uh, young people if they want to, but I've mostly worked with adults in my studio, and I teach acrylic, I teach uh, watercolor, uh, pastel, and I have people fill out a short questionnaire with just a few questions so we can identify what it is their goals are and what it is their background is so that I can focus on helping them with what they would like to learn. And, and, yeah. uh, and what is the demographic for that? I'm, a I'm asking that because it seems like young people are less interested in doing anything with their hands except poking at the screens on their phones. Oh, right. Okay, so that's why you were asking that earlier. So I did have a wonderful opportunity to work with a young teenage boy who was very interested, very talented musician and also draftsman and painter. And he was probably 12, 13. And so he came and studied with me for a summer. Um, and I also worked with Aaron's Promise with a young group of those folks were more high school age. I did three sessions with them, helping them get their paintings ready. That is my focus. I am not the skilled person that somebody wants to come to for computer graphics. I am hands-on with materials. I love materials, and I'm just digging into how materials work together and, and um, how to get different effects with them. Uh, that brings me to... Uh abstract versus realism and I understand realism in art and the inspirations and motivations for it. I have a little more difficulty understanding the creativity behind abstraction. You seem to do a lot of abstracts or what I would call semi-abstracts. What inspires those works and what is the meaning of the transparent orbs that seem to float through many of your pieces? I started doing the transparent orbs when my uh, granddaughter was born. She's five and a half now, and she just brought a, just a brand new level of joy and happiness into my life. Now I have ten grandchildren between the both sides of the family, so it's it's a delight to be around them. I just love being around young children. So what inspires the abstract works? Abstract concepts, I think. P playfulness, um, the love of color, the love of seeing different colors together, the love of seeing textures and how they work with each other. Um, they are still mysterious to me, even though I'm making them. Uh, it's, it's, they're harder for me to do than the landscapes, so it's a way for me to challenge myself to come up with or to have something created through me that is a balanced composition that I end up being happy about. And so that often takes a lot longer than creating a landscape for me, but I like the challenge, and so that's one of the reasons why I keep going after that. You yeah, know, when, I th when I thought about that question, I thought about, uh, I love jazz, and so I was thinking about improvisation yes, in jazz. Yes, absolutely. It's co t so connected to that, and I love jazz as well, and that's the music that I, some of the music that I listen to the most is jazz, not words, but just um so does that, tra does that translate itself into uh, an abstract? It does, yeah. I actually have done some pieces inspired by jazz music, yeah. And that, yes, and sold and, <laughs> yeah. Um, this is kind of an off-the-wall question. What do you think will be the impact of artificial intelligence in art? Uh, yes, I know everybody is very curious about that. Um, it's certainly opening new doors for people. Um, I hope people stay, keep a balance of, that's been a favorite word of mine for decades, balance, to embrace what it can do for us but not let it steal our creativity from us. Um, for me, I haven't delved too much into it. I, I have more listened to other artists and what they're thinking about it and feeling about it. Um, I really, 
it would be like telling a gardener that they can no longer work in the garden. They have to sit in a chair and imagine they're working in the garden and they're not getting the dirt under their fingernails any longer. That's what AI feels like to me. And, uh, and that doesn't appeal to me personally. I don't have angry feelings about it toward anybody if they're into it, but I'm definitely a hands-on materials person. Uh, tell us about your current projects. Current, I'm sort on? of between projects. I mean, I have this floral uh, series that's been going on for about a year. I also have sketchbooks that I work in every day, one or another. Um, very excited about the upcoming drawing show that's coming to Lowell. That's a collaboration between Columbia University. My youngest went to Columbia University, so it, it has an extra sentimental value to it that I was able to get a piece into that show. Um, and that is the pieces, the piece that is going to be in that show are drawings that I did in 2020 when we were all coping with COVID in early days before the vaccine. And so I'm very sentimental about these little drawings. They're two and a half inch squares that I did just with a Sharpie marker. And I went out to the river walk or when we were driving, did little landscapes. There, there's a lot of figures in there. There's some animals in nature. And they were observations of our world, but from a place that had to be at a distance. Um, and That's I also love to make handmade paper, so I've incorporated some of my handmade paper into that finished collage yeah. piece. Yeah, that's certainly in the spirit of that uh, that particular show. Well, uh, I've enjoyed talking with you. I want to remind our viewers that you are a member of the Arts League of Lowell Co-op Gallery, and your work can be can, can be seen there. Uh, there are links in the description of this video to Pamela's website, where you can take your time to explore her work in some detail, and to her social media pages. You can also use her website to contact her for commission work, art purchases, and classes. Pamela, Perfect. it has been fun. Thank you. This was great. Thank you so much.